So welcome to A Course in Miracles. We're on text chapter 10, uh, The Idols of Sickness, and we'll continue where we left off uh, at 10.3. We'll start tonight on 10.4, The God of Sickness. Again, let's just recognize the presence of the Christ mind within us all, um, the recognition that we are the Holy Son of God himself. Um, asleep in God, dreaming of a dream of separation, dreaming of a dream that never happened in true reality, and that appears to happen in our mind because of an unforgiven thought of fear, sin, and guilt. And yet the truth is we've never left our home. And the Son of God fell asleep. He fractured himself into nine septillion fractured cells. Yet the Holy Spirit, the mind of God, was still within him. And so the part of him that forgot who he was fractured, and yet each fracture maintained and contained within itself, the self, the soul, the mind, the memory, the Holy Spirit. And it's that Holy Spirit within us all, the voice for God, the memory of God in us all, that calls us to awaken. And so our function <clears throat> and primary purpose in this world is to awaken to our holy self, our divine self our son of God self, to awaken as the dreamer and recognize that we are asleep dreaming. And that is our primary function, to fully know ourself with total clarity, to be ourself knowingly, to remember the son of God with our Christ mind in total clarity. And that's only half the journey. A lot of people think that when you awaken, when you become enlightened, that's it. The job is done. No, that's just halfway there. Once you awaken to the Christ self and recognize that you are the dreamer of the dream, then you'll realize that the entire universe, and more importantly, more specifically to this planet Earth, everybody you see is a fractured projection of you, the dreamer. So everything is you. All the people in the world are fractured projections of yourself. And so now your real function starts and your function is to become a living Christ, a living memory of my father and I are one, the recognition that we're all one in Christ's mind, the self, the son of God. And thus we share our being with God. Now there's a circle of non-dualists that have the belief that the entire universe is God's dream. And that is an absolute no. The universe is not God's dream. We bodies are not God's dream. We're not localization of God. Um, indirectly, yes, but directly we're localizations of the son of God. As God extended himself in love, he created the sonship. One son fell asleep and dreamt up the universe. The universe is a localization of the son of God's dream, not God's dream. And there's a tendency of non-dualists to say, I am God. That would be again incorrect. It's like saying you are your father or your mother. No, you're not. You're an extension of your father and your mother. So therefore you're a child of your father or your mother, but you're not your father and your mother. And as your father and mother created you, you don't create them. What we as mankind have done is we have created an image, an objectified image of what God is. And as we get into a non-dual understanding, we then mistakenly believe that what we see is God's dream. No, what we see as the awakened dreamer is the fractured selves. We see our dream. The universe is the son of God's dream. We collectively are the one son of God. And that's the main distinction between non-dual Christian mysticism, Course in Miracles, that's what Course in Miracles is, non-dualistic Christian mysticism, and schools of like Advaita Vedanta or Buddhism that believe we're activities in God's mind. Indirectly we are because the sun is in God's mind, but what you see is as the physical, physical universe are activities in the sun of God's mind. And their activities, because they're not, they're not, they're all temporal, ephemeral, they're temporal, 
everything that has a lifespan, including every part of this universe, um, 13.9 billion years old, according to the recent scientists, yet through my regression work, 3,000 people under regression over a 10-year period said the universe is roughly 6.4 billion years old. That's 3,000 people under hypnotic regression. How would they all know the same number? And how would they all know that the sun fractured itself into nine septillion beings? And so that's what's happened to the mind. We've fractured nine septillion, eight billion living on this planet, beings, cells, fractured cells, each one containing the memory of God in it. That's the path back, the memory within the self, the soul. And so this course of miracles is the Christ mind, the awake part of the mind, the awake part of the dreamer, the the part of the dreamer that knows he's dreaming, addressing the fractured selves, because of free will, the dreamer can't awaken the rest of his fractured selves who believe they are real. Just as God giving us free will won't awaken us, he'll allow us to return to him. And therefore manifestation is an ego idea, because when we manifest, what are we manifesting? We're manifesting our dream. We're manifesting our desire to create, but yet if we don't know what we are, what we are, what do we create? But again, fractured, unconscious parts of ourselves, the material world. So time is in our mind, and because we believe in time, we're in the universe. The minute we no longer believe in time, we awaken to timelessness, which is the awake part of the Christ mind or the Son of God's dreaming mind. And so let's recognize that we are being called. We are being called to awaken. We see in this world right now the darkness of men's hearts and the spread of tyranny as the fallen mind tries to regain control, which is an ego concept. Control over what? Control over the fractured selves, not realizing it's all themselves. And so the more mankind tries to control, the more the Christ mind calls us to awaken. And the avatars, which is what we are, projections of the self. Every single one of us is an avatar. An avatar is not some special guru. Every single being is an avatar. There's no such thing as special. There's no such thing as higher selves. Christ awoke. Jesus awoke. He's the highest part of yourself. He's not a higher alternative self. He's not an out there self. It's you. It's a part of you that's awoken. It's really if we're going to be non-dualistic, then it's all you. And the worship of deities, gurus, um, messiahs, masters. The minute you call someone master, you take away your own self-mastery. Yes, there are great teachers in this world, Jesus specifically, um, Ramana Maharishi. Today, there's Muji, Gangaji, great, great teachers. Rupert Spira, Spira, great teachers of non-dualistic consciousness. And that you put them on a pedestal, you take away from the self that is dreaming. They're but signposts to our awakened Holy Spirit, the self, the Holy Son of God self. Don't do that to yourself. Don't put anyone between you and God. All teachers are simply signposts, echoes of the memory of what we are, echoes of the voice for God. What is the voice for God? It's the voice within all of us, the voice within all minds, because we are mind, God is mind, the sun is mind within mind, and we are activities, minds within the dreamer's mind, in the mind of God. And each aspect contains the original memory of itself, original memory, the memory of spirit, it's Holy Spirit. It's spirit which is made holy by God's extension of himself. The extension of love is the extension of spirit. God is mind, God is spirit, God is love. And therefore, what are we? What is the sun? Sun is a mind, sun is spirit. The sun is an extension of God's love. Therefore, the sun is the Holy Spirit of God contains the Holy Spirit of God. And so what is every fracture in the dream, every body, mind, spirit activity, a fracture of mind, a fracture of the love of God. That is what you are. That is why you're here. 
the reason you don't just floaty floaty in the spirit world and you project it into a world of non of duality is so that you can remember what you are through the experience of what you're not because you cannot learn what you are in an environment in 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 a medium which you've forgotten the dream is the medium of forgetfulness but through the activities of realizing what you not it alludes to it points to what you are what you are is love what you are is that which you've seeked because when spirit called forth from your heart temple for you to awaken to self what pursued the awakening the fracture the forgotful part the forgot the forgotten part ego seeks happiness ego seeks salvation from its misery and yet when ego finds the open door and steps through the doorway the bridge to a conscious awakening the ego dissolves and what remains is the eternal spirit the eternal essence of the son of god and it remembers itself for being the extension of god's love we are the kingdom so bear in mind that our desire to help others is really to help ourselves and the desire to help others leads us to remembering ourselves if we do it consciously if we do it with the ego believing we're special believing we have special gifts believing we're greater than the grandiosity of the ego greater than our brothers and therefore we're special because we can help others because we're witches or sages or gurus or master teachers the minute you put the word master in front of your name you have fallen beyond the darkest dark there is no master but self mastery there is only one master and that is god and the reason we're asleep is because we had the authority problem because we could not accept the fact that as we were creators we were created too and a part of that mind of ourselves resisted it and hence fell asleep let's not make the same mistake while we're in form so a warning to all those so called unhealed teachers unhealed healers wanting to heal the world because they're special the minute you make yourself special you make your your students less than and the minute you make your fractured mirrors less than yourself what is it that you see in the world but a lesser god a lesser self don't do that to yourself don't do that to your fractured selves don't do that to the love we are i'm here to remind you that there's no such thing as spiritual spiritual is a label no different to the word religion it's not special you're not special because you're spiritual you're not special because you've said the universe will provide the universe cannot provide anything the universe is you god provides god's holy spirit the memory of god in you is what provides don't be so arrogant as to think that you are beyond the word god you are not because you exist because of god you exist in god you are an extension of god never claim to be god the very essence of what you are is made from the self same essence as god that as the father creates so the child creates like the father but the child cannot create the father do not make the mistake of claiming that you are god the extension yes the source absolutely not do not make the mistake that many schools of non dualistic do non dualism do to believe that this universe is an activity of god's dream it is absolutely not it is the activity of the son of god who fell asleep it's an activity of his dream our dream we are the son of god collectively we fell asleep dreamt of fear sin and guilt and we created the universe out of complete and total fear we did not create this universe out of love we created it because we had no idea what we were and we were afraid of the light and therefore we manifested the material universe in order to prove that our memory of god was false in order to prove that we could absorb 
the power of our Father. We could not, we have not. And yet our Father will not punish and has not judged us because he's aware we're dreaming. And so he spoke his voice into the dream. And that is the voice we hear within us that calls us to awaken. Holy Son of God, you are witness to life itself. Choose again. Focus only on the love you are. Focus only on extending the love you are. Do not get caught that you can fix the dream. The dream is not real. The material world is not real. If adding love and joy to taking care of this earth, to fixing the forests, to preserving the wildlife, to preserving animals, comes from deep within you to join with the soil, to join with the ocean, to join with the currents, the rivers, to, to end pollution, calls from within, then know it's love calling itself. But do not make the forests, the oceans, the rivers, the clouds, the sky, a god to be worshipped. Gaia is but a name for a little round planet, no different to a body. The planet is not conscious. The body is not conscious. We all exist in consciousness. Holy Son of God, remember your Father through remembering yourself. Do not forget that the world of darkness and tyranny cannot absorb the joyous lightness of being. You are light. Be the light that brings others to the awakening of the light within themselves. You are not here to save anyone. There is no one to save. There is only the self to awaken. This is the message from our Father through our awakened Christ mind to you. Remember, by willing to be shown, be still and know I am a son of my father, a son of the living God. And so be it. The God of sickness. Again, just excuse this old PDF. It's got a couple of capitalized errors, those of you that are English teachers. You have not attacked God and you do love him. And you love him because it's within you. And even though you can't remember God and if God is not an object, it's the very essence of love the essence of life itself. God is pure energy. And another word for pure energy is spirit. God is a spirit. And those that worship him need to worship him in the spirit, the Bible teaches us, the words of Jesus. So God is spirit. The son of God is spirit too. And as the son of God fractured himself into nine septillion beings, nine septillion thoughts, thoughts, in the mind, spirit. God is mind. God is spirit. The sun is mind. The sun is spirit. The activities of the mind of the sun's dream, the sentient thought forms in the mind's dream are minds, spirits. It's these fractured of mind spirits that have projected into form us, the humans on this planet. And yet we are activities in a singular mind, dreaming of an entire universe and a place where we rest before we project to learn again because we can only remember in duality. That which calls forth to remember, to awaken, to seek a better way is God itself, is the essence of God. That's how you know you love him because it calls you to love. Your nature is loving because your nature is the same essence made in the same image, same essence as God. That's how you know you love God.
because love calls you to be yourself knowing you. Can you change your reality? Absolutely not. No one can will to destroy himself. When you think you are attacking yourself in your mind, when you belittle yourself, when you're not good enough, when you, when you attack your body for the way it looks, okay, it is a sure sign that you hate what you think you are. And we all do this. We're constantly looking in the mirror and then attacking what we look like. Okay, So when you do that, it is a sure sign that you hate what you think you are. Fair enough. But, and, and this, and only this can be attacked by you. And what you attack, you resist. And what you resist, resist persists. Okay? The very idea that we age is because what ages? The image. The word image is really the word, the words, I am age. So forget about the image. Be yourself knowingly and lovingly. Pour that into the world. What you think you are can be very hateful or very sad or very depressed. And what this strange image makes you do can be very destructive. So think about the destructive thoughts we often have about ourselves, our weight, our aging bodies, our, our failing eyesight, etc., etc., etc. Yet the destruction is no more real than the image you're trying to destroy. Although those who make idols do worship them. And let's stop there for a second. What are the idols? Idols are the things we make manifest, houses, relationships, jobs, careers, pop idols, movie idols that we put on a pedestal and we want to be like them and or we jealous of them. Or we resent them because we want to be image. Okay, Idols are nothing, but their worshippers are the sons of God in sickness are the sons of God in sickness. Where's the sickness? In our mind, in our awareness, in our spirit. Spirit, mind, same thing. Spirit, mind, body, mind, identification. A body, mind, the physicality, is a projection of a sick spirit. When the spirit heals, awakens, what does it project? Pure light. Where's the body, mind? They dissolve. Some awake spirit, awake part of the mind, are the true avatars that project onto this earth to bring forth the light into the world to awaken the rest of themselves. They're not here to heal others. They're here to bring them their same, their, their fractured selves back to the awakened mind. God would have them released from their sickness and return to his mind. How? Through you. He will not limit your power to help them. Let's read that again. He will not limit your power to help them because he has given it to you. Do not be afraid of it because it is your salvation. The awakening of others, when done from a place of awakened, healed mind, is how you realize you are the healed healer. What comforter is there for the sick children of God, sick in their mind, except his power through you? This is Christ calling forth you to be that voice for God. It's not asking you to give up your day job. It's not asking you to run away from your family to go find yourself. It's not asking you to drop your children off and never go. It's not asking you to quit anything. I seek mercy, not sacrifice. Don't change careers. Don't change jobs. There's nothing wrong with your job. People that hate their jobs, it's because they hate themselves and don't recognize the self. And so if they're not happy within no, no environment, no job is going to make them happy. And so we think that by changing our careers and becoming life coaches, we're going to now be happy. No, you're not. If you're unhappy, no matter what you do, we'll just highlight your happiness. If you think you're going to go into this world and heal others when you're not healed, what are you going to do? You're going to be meeting mirrors that match your unhealed self. If you do not recognize that every psycho parent, the patient that comes into your psycho practice is fracturing you, mirroring you, 
then you've allowed the ego to capture your imagination and your ego grandiosity makes you think you're special and you're fixing others. They are yourself reflected back at you. Awaken, blessed teacher. And there's nothing worse in this world than a person who's now gone and done a course in psychotherapy, not recognizing the fractures of himself. Or even worse, they go and become life coaches. I wanna, how can you coach life? You are life. What are you gonna show people? Unless you've made a success of life, meaning you are healed, not worldly success, but how are you gonna guide others if you have not transcended what they are still trying to learn? How on earth are you going to be a reflection of what life can be like if you yourself are running away from the very thing which is yourself? It's all you. When people claim the toxic, the environment is toxic. Only toxicity sees toxicity. A healed healer doesn't. You never hear in scriptures Jesus saying, well, that community was toxic. Let's not stay there. Let's not go there. Those people are toxic. He used to go into the, the most wounded, sick leprosy colonies and stay with them and bring them healing. People wouldn't touch lepers. Jesus would go and hug them. He didn't say, oh, look at them. They're toxic. Let's not go there. He poured himself lovingly where there was no light. You think you can escape your suffering by moving country, changing jobs, changing your hairstyle, Botoxing your face, going to the gym, building muscle, becoming super fit, going on a self-help improvement program, meditating, learning to meditate for 16 hours while breathing through your third eye and aligning your chakras. Holy son of God, there's no body, there's no chakra, there's no third eye. Don't let mystical nonsensical concepts under the guise of spirituality derail you from knowing God as your heart, not resides in your heart, is your heart. And I'm not talking about your heart that beats. I'm talking the very essence, heart, the center of your true self. Remember that it does not matter. No, no, nothing actually does where in the sonship he is accepted. But accepted is what he needs to be. There are great Christians that are awoken to Christ. Padre Pio, Francis of Assisi. There's a place for all religions. There's a place for all paths. But the minute the dogmatic leaders make their path special, the minute a church asks for money, so it can build buildings. It's lost its way. God does not need marketing. He is always accepted for all. And when your mind receives him, the remembrance of him awakens throughout the, the, the sonship. This is vital. Holy Son of God, remember this line for the rest of your life. He is always accepted for all. And this is all you need to do. And the rest is you need do nothing. And when your mind receives him, the remembrance of him awakens throughout the sunshine. Each one of us that awakens to the remembrance of our true self is another one fracture that joins with the Christ mind, the awake lit part of the mind. That is your only function in this world. Awaken to self, holy self, divine self, the self which is the son of God, the memory of your Holy Spirit. And unless you've awoken to self, do not go and try and fix the world. Because all you're going to do is project your unhealed fractures back into the world. Healer, heal thyself first and foremost. What the world does not need is another unhealed healer spewing for dogmatic spiritual or religious concepts. There's only one truth and that truth 
is there is only God. The extension of God is the sonship, made in the same essence as that which is the love of God. What else is there to know? There is no way to reach God through the physical body, not through energy anything, not through energy healing, not through breathing, not through praying, not through mantra. All of those activities are designed to focus, quieten the mind. No different to working on a financial spreadsheet and becoming totally focused. But it's the conscious focus that is required through meditation. And when you go still within, the voice for God is heard within you as what? As your own divine Holy Spirit voice. If you're hearing voices claiming to be some mystical creature from some far off galaxy, it's the ego that has misappropriated your identity and has allowed you to believe you're special and you can channel Zork from Zeus or from the Pallades because you are some form of star child or elemental. Throw away the labels, Holy Son of God. There is you and the Father as one. That is it. What else do you want to know? How much more do you need to mystify this illusion, this dream you're having about yourself? How much more do you need to be reminded? How many more times do you need to be reminded that you cannot be anything else but that which is the extension of your source? Why do you want to mystify it? Why do you want to make it magic? Why do you want to imbue yourself with special powers. My father and I are one is what Jesus taught us. Jesus didn't have a guru. You don't need one either. Allow your guru to be the voice for God inside you. Don't put someone between yourself and God, especially not Jesus. He's a signpost, a voice, a symbol of what you can be. He was showing you and I and all of us what it is like to be God conscious. The Christ mind is a God conscious mind. The remembering of self is the remembering of the self same essential nature, love of God. Heal your brothers by simply accepting God for them. Don't try and fix them. Don't try and heal them. Don't try and restore them. You have no idea what the script is for them and yourself. You simply heal them in your mind and you need do nothing. Be supportive. Give a kind word. Smile. Show up. Be there. Be there as you are. Don't try and fix. Fix your mind about them, your perception about them. See them as healed and offer them healing by your actions towards them. Treat them as if they are healed. Show them that you see no sickness. Show them that you see no disease. It's like treating a little child as if he was equal to you. Treat the leper, the beggar, the ill person in exactly the same way. Show them that you recognize them as healed. Through your actions, you will know yourself. By your fruits, you will be known. Your minds are not separate. And God is only one channel. Only one. Not Zork from Zeus and the Pallades. Not Abraham from the void. Don't do that to your siblings. Only one channel for healing. Because he has but one son. And that son is the channel when the son remembers his father within himself, remembers the memory of God, the Holy Spirit, as his commanding mind. Give the authority of your mind to the memory of God in your mind. And the memory of God is not an entity called the Holy Spirit. You are spirit and the holiest holy of you is the Holy Spirit. God's remaining communication link with all his children joins them 
together and to him. We're one together, joined to God. Be aware of this, okay? To be aware of this is to heal them because it is the awareness that no one is separate. The awareness, the conscious awareness. And before you move into conscious awareness, you have to at least accept the reality, accept the concept of the reality that you are the holy son of God. You are the dreamer that dreamt up this entire universe. Why? Because God gave you the power to create as he creates. A son of God is the same ability to create as God because he's made from the self-same essence as that which is the creator of everything. There's only one creator. There's an idea that there's multiple universes. That is ridiculous. There's only one dreamer dreaming. There's no need for multiple universes. We imagine there's multiple universes, but we have no proof. We haven't even found the edge of this universe. And what is the edge of this universe? It's the edge of our dreaming mind. To believe that a son of God can be sick is to believe that a part of God can suffer. So when you think someone is sick, you believe that a part of God can suffer. And therefore you sick by seeing someone sick. Love cannot suffer because it cannot attack. The remembrance of love therefore brings invulnerability with it. Do not side with the sickness in the presence of a son of God, even if he believes in it. For your acceptance of God in him acknowledges the love of God he has forgotten. And so have you if you're not seeing it that way. Your recognition of him as a part of God reminds him of the truth about himself, which he is denying. And so are you if you're seeing him sick. Would you strengthen his denial of God and thus lose sight of yourself as an extension of God? Or would you remind him of his wholeness and remember your God creator with him? So the minute you see him as healed in your mind and treat him as if he was perfectly healed, compassionately loving sensitively remember yourself remember your brother is one with you to believe a son of god is sick is to worship the same idol he does read that again to believe a son of god is sick is to worship the same idol as he does as he does so psychotherapists life coaches healers ministers if you're watching this shame on you Shame on you. To believe a son of God is sick as to worship the same idol he does. Reflect the love of God. This is a hard teaching. This is us getting a boot up our ethereal bum. Christ is reminding us that we think up silly little things. I call it spiritual. No different to religion. It's a belief. Let go of beliefs. Heaven has no need for beliefs. There's only pure knowing in the recognition of the self, the shared being with God. Unless you have proof, never utter a word about it. Have you ever seen chakras? Have you ever seen a third eye? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. God created love, not idolatry. All forms of idolatry are caricatures of creation taught by sick minds, too divided to know that creation shares power and never absorbs it. Shares power. Shares, not special. Don't turn a brother into a special guru. Yes, there are many brothers that came before us that awoke to their Christ mind and in their sheer presence, we were brought to tears because we recognized our dreaming mind. We recognized the error and they became representations of the light of the Christ mind to be revered, to be loved as a brother, not to be worshipped. Sickness is idolatry because it is the belief that power can be taken from you 
and someone else has more than you do or that you have more than someone else, life coaches. Yet this is impossible because you're a part of God who is all power. It's not you. It's done through you. People say, but how, Lou, you know, how do you do this in the world of business or the world of spirituality? There's no difference between business, spirituality. There is nothing more earthly and something more corporate-y. These are labels in your mind. These are all fractured selves. There's no holy place in this planet. The holiest place on this planet is in your heart where an ancient hatred is turned to love. The minute you make a place special or spiritual, you take away from the very essence of that which is the love you are, dreaming up this whole thing because you temporarily forgot you are love. A sick God must be an idol made in the image of what its maker thinks he is. And that is exactly what the ego does, perceiving a son of God, a sick God, self-created, self-sufficient, very vicious, and very vulnerable. And that's why we break apart and have traumatic episodes of depression. To depress, to be depressed is to be an idolater. You idolizing sickness, depression, sadness, rage, viciousness, littleness is simply a sign of not being yourself knowingly. If you want to heal, be still in the ask to be shown. Let go of everything you believe. Empty the cup. Is this the idol you would worship? A sick, sad, lost, in translation, being? Is this the image you would be vigilant to save? Look calmly at the logical conclusion of the ego's thought system and judge whether its offering is really what you want, for this is what it offers you. Whether its offering is really what you want. Do you really want this world? Do you really want special love relationships? Have any past special love relationships made you feel totally at peace, worthy, comfortable, and God conscious? Only a mighty companion can do that. And the mighty companion is your Holy Spirit, first and foremost. Seek you first the kingdom, and all else shall be given you, because you will be joined with mighty companions. But if you need to be told how beautiful, how special, how wonderful you are, and you need someone to make you feel special, and it's you and them against the world, you're asleep, dreaming of idols. To obtain this, you are willing to attack the divinity of your brothers and thus lose sight of yours. And you are willing to keep it hidden to protect an idol you think will save you from the dangers for which it stands. But do not exist. There are no idolaters in the kingdom, but there is a great appreciation for everything God created. And what did God create? The sonship. That's all God created because that's all God is, love. The sonship is the extension of God's love. Because of the calm knowledge of each one is a part of him. God's son knows no idol and puts nowhere, no one before him and he's God, but he does know his father. Health in this world is counterpart of value in heaven. It is not my merit that I contribute to you, but my love. For you do not value yourself. Put all sorts of things between you and God. Even teachers that point you in that direction. You put them above yourself between you and God. When you do not value yourself, you become sick in your mind. But my value of you can heal you because the value of God's son is one. So this is the Christ reminding us that if we just turn inward to that part of our mind, which Jesus represented while he walked this earth, the Christ he became, the awake part of our mind he is, when I said my peace, 
I give unto you. I meant it. Peace comes from God through me to you. It is for you, although you may not even ask for it. It's still yours. When a brother is sick, it's because he is not asking for peace. You ask for all sorts of other things, houses, jobs, money, relationships, but you never ask for peace. Ask for peace first and foremost, and all else shall be given you because peace is an extension of love and love is an extension of the kingdom and the kingdom is an extension of you, holy son of God, and therefore does not know that he has it. The acceptance of peace is the denial of illusion. And sickness is an illusion. Yet every son of God has the power to deny illusions anywhere in the kingdom, merely by denying them completely in himself, first and foremost. Fantasies, gone. Past, be gone. Worry of a future, be gone. Be present, be still, and know I am. I can heal you because I know you, and therefore I'm the reminder of your mind of who you are. I know your value for you, and it is this value that makes you whole. Why? Because we're one shared being. Christ is reminding us that we are equal to and one with. A whole mind is not idolatrous and does not know of conflicting laws. So you are fractured of this whole mind. Everything you think you know, you do not. I will heal you merely because I have only one message, and it is true. Your faith in it will make you whole when you have faith in me. And what he's saying here, faith in Christ means believing what he tells us is true, not worshiping him as if he was some false deity. This is what the Christian church did to Jesus. Do not do that. Certainly not in the course. Many a teacher keeps going off to Jesus this and Jesus that and Jesus spoke to me. Jesus is an identity. At least if you're going to say the word Jesus, say first and foremost, Christ Jesus. Christ, as in that which he is now. Jesus, that which he represented while he walked this earth. Jesus, the son of God. All of us, the same son of God. Because we're not separate entities. We're one being dreaming of billions. When God calls his son, he calls us the dreamer. All the fractures return and awaken as the Christ mind, Jesus came as a demonstration that the transcendence of body mind through death, resurrection, ascension, not, not only is conceptual, he proved it. He became a living embodiment of the son of God as we all are one in that sonship. I do not bring God's message with deception and you will learn this as you learn that you are always receiving as much as you accept. Can't force this upon you. You could accept peace for everyone and offer them perfect freedom from all its illusions because you heard his voice in you. But have no other gods before him or you will not hear. Let go of the desires of this world. The only thing you want to design in this world is to be thyself knowingly. And when you know this, then to pour yourself knowingly into the world and be the light and salvation of this world. God is not jealous of the gods you make, but you are. Think of all the idols you've made, all the people you admire and that you're jealous of. You would save them and serve them because you believe that they made you. You think they are your father because you are projecting onto them the fearful fact that you made them to replace God. Yet when they seem to speak to you, remember that nothing can replace God. And whatever replacements you have attempted are nothing. Very simply then, you may believe you are afraid of nothingness but you are really afraid of nothing or no thing. And in that awareness, you are healed. Let's read, read that line again. Very simply then, you may believe you are afraid of nothingness. You're afraid of loneliness. You're afraid of not contributing. 
You're afraid of the illusion, but you are really afraid of nothing because nothing you see is real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And in that awareness, you are healed. And only in that awareness, nothing the body does, no teaching, no technique, awaken in awareness through understanding you transcend the body-mind, not through ritual, not through dogma. Yes, through dedication. Yes, through bhakti, devotion, serving. But only if you're present in self while serving. You can serve the world. You can run around like a Mother Teresa. But unless you're present in the self, you could be the biggest saintly person in this world. And you still are coming back to do it again. You will hear the God you listen to. You made the God a sickness. And by making him, you made yourself able to hear him. You cannot be sick. And at some stage, your body's going to get old and it's going to go. And it will go through either a, an accident or an illness and disease. By then, you're ready. Go make something of it. Many people... At such a go at Ken Wapnick because he died of cancer. Ken Wapnick became a symbol of light and Christ in this world. We all have to put our body down. And no one dissolves into thin air because that's against the law of that which we've made as the illusion. Nothing really dies. Death is a misperception of what it is. Death is just a circle in the continuity. It's just it's back to zero and you start again because life is eternal. But because we cannot remember ourselves and therefore we cannot remember our father, we can't even remember the spirit world just where we were just before we projected here. So we just make death to be something real and then imagine far off places, fantastical places that we're going to return to when we die where our loved ones are going to be there. Except the people we hate. God forbid we're married seven times. Which wife are we going to end up with? Which virgin is waiting for us once we've blown ourselves up? For God, how ludicrous. Yet you did not create him because he is not the will of the Father. All these gods you created are not real. Even the very image and identity we have and all the names we've given to God. In Judaism, the 72 sacred names of God. That which can be named is not the eternal name. The very essence of God's name is simply in the breath, Yahweh, breathing in, Yah, breathing out, Vay, Yah, And it's not even a word, it's a breath, which just simply means breath, divine, eternal. And then we've just gone and academia has made ourselves so clever. Look, we have different words for love. Look, we have different words for God. The eternal, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, omnificent, shared being with you, Holy Son of God. So these idols are not eternal and will be unmade for you the instant you signify your willingness. That's all you need. Your willingness to accept only the eternal, divine, creator. Only one, life. Only one living God of which you are a part. If God has but one son, there is but one God. And I promise you, he doesn't care what we call him other than father, perhaps. Mother, whatever. You share reality with him because reality is not divided. To accept other gods before him is to place other images before yourself. And what are the other gods we place before God? Because I know oh, God comes first. People place his things in events. The pursuit of how much time in your day do you dedicate to being, abiding silently with your creator? You don't have time. And then you don't place other gods before it. If you're not dedicating at least 10% of your day to abiding in God, Holy brother, sister in God. 
if you're not giving 10% of your tithing, timing to God, not money to some institutional building church in the name of Jesus, time alone in prayer, communion, conversation with your father, with our creator. Don't tell me you don't put other idols before him. The very fact that you say you don't have time means time has become your God. You do not realize how much you listen to your gods and how vigilant you are on their behalf, the job, the relationship, the children, the parents, the traffic, the job, the boss. If you cannot make time for God, then you will be trapped in time for a long, long time, no matter how much you say you love them. Yet they are, exist only because you honor them. All these idols, because you honor them, because you give them time. Place honor where it is due, and peace will be yours. It is your inheritance from your real father. You cannot make your father. And the father you made, the God you made, did not make you. Honor is not due to, the, to illusions. For honor them, for, or to honor them is to honor nothing. Don't honor anything in this world. Be proud of nothing you've made in this world. Be proud of no one in this world. Pride is ego's deadliest, missing the mark, sin. And be proud of, and be proud of achievements, pride in what you've made, pride in what you've achieved. Be loving in the knowing of our shared being. That's all. Yet fear is not due to them either, for nothing can be fearful. Fear no one. Never fear a human being. Never fear anything you've made because you've made this entire universe. Fear none of it, not the comet not the leopard, not the lion, not the politician, not the virus. These are idols you're afraid of, and you've put them before God, taking away the power of the very self you are, holy son of God. You have chosen to fear love because of its perfect harmlessness. You fear it because it's harmless. And because of this fear, you have been willing to give up your own perfect helpfulness, and your own perfect help. Only at the altar of God will you find peace. And what is the altar of God? Your center being, the Lord God of your being, your heart, that heart as in the core of the love you are, not some symbolic heart, not, some, not the organ, the very essence of what you are. And this altar is in you because God put it there. And even though you fractured yourself nine septillion times, nine septillion spirit beings who've now projected as eight billion people on this planet, the core essence of what you are, the essential essence, the essential nature of what you are, when you take everything else away, is the self same essence as our Father. And of course, He put it there because you are it. His voice, capital V still calls you to return and he will be heard when you place no other gods before him. Be still enough. You can give up the God of sickness for your brothers. In fact, you would have do so if you give him up for yourself. You cannot be ill. And what is ill is that which you've made. Bodies come and go. Don't try and hang on to them. For if you see this, so if you, if you, sorry, for if you see the God of sickness anywhere, in anyone, in anything, you have accepted sickness, you've accepted that God. And if you accept that God, you will bow down and worship him because he was made as God's replacement. Don't pay attention to this world. Not to the dying parts, not to the cooling parts, not to the heating parts, not to the temperature, not to the whatever. Pay no attention. Extend yourself lovingly. And the mind, the world, you will start to see a new world. A new world which will be a closer representation of the real world, heaven. 
in which light is all there is. These false gods is the belief that you can choose which gods are real. Although it is clear this has nothing to do with reality, it is equally clear that it has everything to do with the reality as you perceive it. We'll stop there. Amen. I'll now take some questions. We now continue with text chapter 10, 10.5, um, the end of sickness. All magic is an attempt at reconciling the irreconcilable. So let's think of magic. What do we use as magic? Energy healing, Reiki tarot, card reading, predicting the future, astronomy, astrology, which one? You know, the trying to predict the future. I mean, there's a place for things like, you know, the ayahuasca mushrooms, because they'll give us a glimpse without the filter. But if we don't know what we are, and we do the mushroom ceremony thinking it's spiritual, and all we get is this hit, this amazing experience, but we have no idea what we're experiencing because we don't realize it's the self extended everywhere. And so a mind unaware of itself having an out-of-body experience or a non-localized experience then just gets attached to the experience like a drug without realizing what it's actually experiencing. Why? Because we're trying to reconcile the illusion, which is irreconcilable. All religion, here it is, <laughs> is the recognition that the irreconcilable cannot be reconciled. Oops. Sickness and perfection are irreconcilable. If God created you perfect, you are perfect. And if you believe you're not, it's because you're judging yourself with the ego's mind, which means you're judging the body mind. And of course, the objectifications of the physical body or the objectifications of your thoughts, which you then I believe are either wounded or sick, based on the belief in separation, the past, guilt, sin, fear. If you believe you can be sick, you have placed other gods before God, before him. God is not at war with the gods of sickness you made, but you are. God, he is the symbol, okay, of deciding against God. So the idol becomes, the gods, little gods, become the symbol of deciding against God. And you are afraid of him because he cannot be reconciled with God's will, the ego. You become afraid of it because you cannot be reconciled with God's will, which is to return to fully awaken. And then this next line is so vital, which means choose right-mindedness, choose the Holy Spirit mind. Don't pay attention to the problems going on in the world. If you attack him, the idols you've made, or your brother for that matter, or anything in this world, you will make him real to you, the God of sickness. You make it real. So if you attack sickness or attack a sick brother by the belief that he can be sick, you make it real. You make his sickness to you, which is why I am such an advocate for saying, watch out, empaths, that the ego doesn't use empathy to drag you emotionally into the suffering of another. Because if you feel their suffering, you make it real for you. And now both of you are trapped in the, in the idolatry of body minds trapped in suffering, believing that you're suffering because you have some special gift called empathy. Empathy is not compassion. Compassion is, is a high form of love. It's caring for, understanding what others are going through, but not buying into it. Because the minute you buy into it, you buy into the illusion of their dream. But if you refuse to worship him in whatever form he appears to you and whatever 
whatever you think you see him, or wherever you think you see him, he will disappear into the nothingness out of what he was made. So bodies appear and disappear. Let it go. Reality, which is God's reality, not our space-time reality, because our space-time reality is not reality. It's the misperceived projection, hallucination of our self. Reality can dawn only on an unclouded mind. It is always there to be accepted, but its acceptance depends on your willingness to have it. So it's like the beautiful blue sky. It's always there, but on a cloudy day, you can't see the sky. Why? The clouds, the egoic thoughts, the ideas, the egoic idols are in the way, but the blue sky is always there. To know reality must involve the willingness to judge unreality for what it is. Nothing you see means anything. There's no purpose. There's no reason. There's nothing there. Everything that appears as physical matter appears as a temporal projection of the location of the mind you think you are. To overlook nothingness, in other words, the physical world, is merely to judge it correctly. And because of your ability to evaluate it truly, just an hallucination of yourself, to let it go. So when you know the world is an hallucination of a misperceived projection of yourself, all of it is you. And therefore, all of it, what is the real you? Spirit, self, holy son of God. All of it then becomes a memory of the self, of the Holy Spirit, of the voice for God. Knowledge cannot dawn on a mind full of illusions because truth and illusions are, in, are, in, are irreconcilable. Truth is whole and cannot be known by part of a mind, especially a part of the mind which is asleep. The sonship cannot be perceived as partly sick. So don't think of what you see as a projection in the world as evil or sick or wrong. Because the minute you see them as evil, sick, and wrong, it must be in your mind. And when it no longer draws your attention, no longer triggers you, it's because it's, it's now healed in your mind, in the mind. Because to perceive it that way is not to perceive it at all. If the sonship is one, and it is one, and that I assure you of, because we all know that from the very core of our heart, it is one in all respects. Oneness cannot be divided. If you perceive other gods, your mind is split and you will not be able to limit the split because it is the sign that you have removed part of your mind from God's will. And that's not possible. This means it is out of control. To be out of control is to be out of reason. And then the mind does become unreasonable by defining the mind wrongly you perceive it as a function, as functioning wrongly. So then you see, and then you look and you find fault with the world, meaning the part of your mind which is at fault finds fault with the world. So the part of your mind which is toxic sees toxic. The part of your mind which is fallen asleep and dark sees the evil, sees the shadow self. God's laws will keep your mind at peace because peace is God's will. And his laws are established to uphold his laws and his will. His are the laws of freedom, but yours are the laws of bondage, the bondage to space, time, and matter. Since freedom and bondage are irreconcilable, their laws cannot under, be understood together. So the ego can never understand God's laws. The laws of God work only for your good. And that's the law of one. What is given to one is given to all. And we are the extension thereby that the very self-same essence is God. And there are no other laws besides this one, which is his. Everything else is merely lawless and therefore chaotic. Hence the concept of a random universe. Not random. The script is written. It's happening exactly as it's been scripted. So if you think there's something in the world that is wrong right now, it's scripted perfectly, especially the dark parts, because the dark parts is what gets you to say, there must be another way to see this, because what you see is darkness in the world, evil in the world, malice in the world, the Fauci's, the virus, 
the WHO and all the evil entities in the world. What are you really seeing? Yourself misperceived. Yet God himself has protected everything he created by his laws. Everything which is true, you, the Holy Son of God. Everything that is not under them does not exist. Laws of chaos is a meaningless term. Creation is perfectly lawful. And the chaotic is without meaning because it is without God. You have given your peace to the gods you made, the world, people, places, things, and events. But they are not there to take your peace away from you because you cannot give it to them because they don't actually exist. You think you can, and you think you are, and you think you have, and you think you do, and you think you will, but you cannot because you don't actually think that which thinks is the ego. You, Holy Son of God, are perfectly silent in the silence, which is the love of God. Love, God, spirit, is perfectly silent. And when we hear God's voice, it is a concession of frequency, of the purity of love, in a way that this frequency, which thinks it hears, both internally and externally, can then comprehend the truth of the law of one, the law of God, the immutable law of God. You are not free to give up freedom. You are not free to give up freedom, but only to deny it. You, ca you, you cannot do what God did not intend because what he did not intend does not happen except you think it does in your dream of this universe. Your gods, people, places, things, and events do not bring chaos. You are endowing them with chaos and you're accepting it of them. All this has never been. There is no one outside you. There's nothing outside you. Okay? You are observing yourself and your projected self from 8 billion localized projections. And yet you are the dreamer that dreams them up. Like Rupert Spira's, or Spira's analogy, you are Jane dreaming your Paula in the streets of Paris, observing millions of people. But when you awaken, you realize you're Jane dreaming in bed. You've never left. Nothing but the laws of God has ever been. And nothing but his will will ever be. You were created through his laws and by his will, the extension of himself. And the manner of your creation established you as a creator because he extends himself, and therefore the Son of God is made from the self-same essence as that which God extends himself. What you have made is so unworthy of you that you could hardly want it if you were willing to see it as it is. Because all it is is what you think you want is a block to the, as a filter that blocks the light of the pure awareness of you as awareness itself. You will see nothing at all if you could see reality. And your vision will automatically look beyond it to what is in you and all around you, heaven. Reality cannot break through the obstructions you interpose through your dreaming mind, but it will envelop you completely when you let them go. So reality will become you when you let the idea of the illusions go and recognize only you as the dreamer, dreaming of something that never happened, but in the dream of space, time, and separation. When you have experienced the protection of God, the knowing of your essence, the making of idols becomes inconceivable. You can't, ima you can't imagine conceiving it. Inconceivable. Can't imagine creating it. There are no strange images in the capital M mind of God. And what is not in his mind cannot be in yours because you are of one mind. And that mind belongs to God. It is yours because it belongs to God. For, for to him, ownership is sharing. So what God owns 
is shared equally with his son because what does God own? He's being. What is God? He's being. And what is the extent? He's being. And what are you? The extension, which is he's being. You are God's shared being. And if it be so for God, it is so for you. His definitions are his laws. For by them, he established the universe as what it really is. What is the universe as it really is? Pure light. What have you established the universe as? You interpose it by misperceiving it. And you took that pure light and you created objects in your imagination. So is there a universe? Yes, but it's just pure light. What did you create after the Big Bang? Was you falling asleep and imagining this universe? Matter, space-time matter, objects. Okay? The objects are false. If you could see all the objects in the universe, this world, this body-mind, in the true light of what you are, you wouldn't be able to see there and here. It would just be pure light everywhere. And you are that light of awareness, which is the awareness itself of that which is the love of God, the essence of God's spirit is you. No false gods. You attempt to inter interpose between yourself and your reality. Affect the truth at all. Just temporal dream. The ethereal is not real. Peace is yours. Because God created you and he created nothing else but you as the peace of God. The miracle is the act of a son of God who has laid aside all false gods. People place these things in events. And calls on his brothers to do likewise. Not by preaching to them, but by sharing himself lovingly with all and being the light of the world. Again, not by correcting others, not trying to fix others, but just being the light and treating everyone as if they were the son of God too. It is an act of faith because it is in the recognition that his brother can do it. That's seeing Christ and all. It is a call to the Holy Spirit in his mind, in your brother's mind, a call that is strengthening yours by joining. Because the miracle worker has heard God's voice within him, he strengthens it in a sick brother by weakening his belief in sickness, which he does not share. So don't see your brother as ill as something that you need to fix. If you're seeing him ill, the sickness is in your dreaming mind. The power of one mind can shine into another because all the lamps of God were lit by the same spark. It is everywhere, and it is eternal, you. In many, only the spark remains. For the great rays, God, the love of God, are obscured. Yet God has kept the spark alive so that the rays can never be completely forgotten. And hence, he's given his voice into the dreamer's mind. If you see the little spark, you will learn of the great light. For the rays are there unseen. Perceive the spark and you will heal. But knowing the light, you will create. Why? Because the light is the essence of your creation. Love your creation. Love the world. Unconditionally, love without need. Love without want. Love without desire. Love unconditional means to accept them as they are. Yet in the returning of the light, yet in the returning, the light, the little light must be acknowledged first within yourself. For the separation was a descent from magnitude, God's magnitude, to our separate idea, body, mind, littleness. But the spark in you is still as pure as the great light. Let me read that again. But the spark in you is still as pure as a little light. Because it is the remaining call of creation. Put all your faith in this call. Put all your faith in it. And God himself will answer you. Amen to that. And I'll stop here and we can do some more questions. Now we reach the, the, the end of text chapter 10. The idols of sickness. And we're on... Um, 
section 10.6, the denial of God. And before we continue, the denial of God is not only an atheist's point of view, which of course it is in a way, but to deny something, really think about it. If you deny it, you must have known it in order to deny it. Because you don't deny things you don't know. You just don't even think about it. So the denial of God is not saying God doesn't exist. I and mean, that's an obvious denial. The denial of God is a lot more subtle in the way that the ego, the fallen mind, our fallen asleep mind, that is then born of fear, sin, and guilt, has and fears awakening because it fears that God's nature is similar to our egoic nature. And so the ego fears awakening because it believes if it awakens, it will be punished by God because the ego punishes. So it believes that God's nature must be ego nature, not knowing that ego nature is not the dreamer's na na um, nature and therefore isn't God's nature. So this chapter is talking to our decision-making self, the dreamer who is becoming self-aware and is, and is now choosing right-minded, putting it the guardianship and giving the authority of our mind to the Holy Spirit, to the memory of God in our mind, and not paying any attention to the makeup of the dream, especially the parts of the dream that trigger our emotions, other than the reason it's triggering our emotions is to remind us there is a better way to remind us that we, and, and why is it triggering? Because we have unforgiven guilt, fear, and sin in our mind. We're bearing grudges, we're holding someone to ransom, or we're feeling guilty for having done something. We're therefore feeling guilty for having dreamt the dream that never was. Okay. So the denial of God is not just saying, I deny God. God doesn't exist. It's through our actions, believing in God, but acting as if we believe in the illusion too. And this is the challenge of the world, and especially of people awakening, even in non-duality, is they want to know God and then themselves as the son of or the extension of God's love, but they still want to hang on to the world. When you know the essential nature of self, the son of God, and God, because it's the extension of the essential nature, the essence of, when you know that, which is true reality, can you imagine pure light? Where is the darkness? Where is the, the material world when there's just light? Where are the bodies when you're just spirit? And so wanting to hang on to certain parts of the dream while wanting to know God is denying God. While we resist and complain about anything in this world while we attack our brother for whatever they believe in. Their opposing views, their religions, their dogmas. If we attack them, we make those dogmas real and then we attack and making it then real for ourselves. Don't attack, correct by being. Now, in this teacher-student relationship, since you have come to me and I haven't gone preach, and since this is free, and since I'm sharing only the words of the Holy Spirit brought to us by the Christ mind, represented through Helen Schachman as Jesus, we will correct understandings for the sake of understanding that transcends to knowing. But it's never done in attack of illusion. It's correcting and bringing us into another way of seeing it. Don't attack. Correct it in your understanding. The rituals of the God of sickness are strange and very demanding. The ego is complicated and complex. And think of all the ideas and just think of in terms of religion and spiritual parts, how many it's created keeping them all separate and uniquely special and different from each other. And most of all, joy is never permitted. It wants you to be depressed and angry and sad for the world. Don't be sad for the world. Don't be sad for anything in the illusion. 
including the illusionary suffering of anything in this world. See everything anew. For depression, okay, depress I on, is a sign of allegiance to the God called the ego. Depression means that you have forsworn God. So people that are depressed, they're depressed because there's no meaning in the world but they would know that there's not meant to be any meaning in the world if they knew themselves. So depression is a, a sure sign of the disconnection, the knowing disconnection between self and our creator. And so when there's no connection, there's no awareness of peace, love, and joy, which is the essence of God and ourself. And then we look for meaning in the world, and we're disillusioned by the disappointment of what we have made and the natural consequence, the effect of a fallen asleep mind that cannot remember itself, doesn't know its source, and is now disillusioned in what it's made, the effect is the natural experience called depression, sadness, fear, guilt. Many are afraid, and religion do this, does this. Many are afraid of blasphemy, but they do not understand what it means. They do not realize that to deny God is to deny their own capital I, identity. Because what is our capital identity? It's the son of God, the extension of God's love. The, the identification with the extension of the essential essence and the essential nature of that which is God. And in the sense, the wages of sin is death. And what does sin mean? To miss the mark to not understand. And so when we don't understand our pure nature, our essence, which is the extension of God's love, we then bind to body, mind, world, universe, illusion. And what happens in the world, universe, body, mind, illusion? Things have a lifespan and therefore are born and die. And then what's the point of doing anything in this world or trying to find meaning in this world when things come here? And like it says in chapter 17, where starved and hungry creatures come to die. Pardon, <laughs> we're starved and hungry creatures looking for meaning in a meaningless world, looking for love in that which is made without love. And then we all want to be understood for our uniqueness and specialness, realizing that we're not. And so depression is the inevitable result. So when you come across People that are depressed realize they don't know themselves. And so the best way to show them a way out of their depression is by being that loving, caring, compassionate love of God. Not trying to fix them, just support your brother without recognizing his illusion for himself, but just being supportive and understanding that realize they've forgotten who they are. Bring them the joyous remembrance through yourself. The sense is very literal. Denial of life perceives its opposite. Denial of life, life is God, love. As all forms of that denial replace what is with what is not. No one can really do this, but that you think you can, and what thinks only the ego, and believe you have is beyond dispute because that is the world we we have awoken into as the dreamers of the dream and the localizations called our body, mind, self. Do not forget, however, that to deny God will inevitably result in projection. So we will project it. So we deny God. So we, 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 we hang on to the objectification of a God or a deity or a savior, Jesus, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whatever. But since we don't have that intimate knowing of ourself, which is intimately in relationship and communion with the source of all creation in eternity, so that we have no sense of self, God, okay, God and self, you will then believe that others and not yourself have done this to you. So someone else has taken away God from you, or someone else wants to invade your country and change your belief in God and kill your idea of God or kill God for you and not let you have a relationship with God because you've objectified it. 
but really what are you playing out? You're playing out your projection, which means you're playing out the fact that you do not know yourself with total clarity. The self, which would know its, its creator because it is in continuous communion with its creator. Why? Because it's the continuous extension of its creator. And so realize this, this is why it's happening to you. You must receive the messages you give because it is the messages you want. And so you believe in objectified God that you don't know, but you believe. And belief simply means you do not know. Because if you know, you have no need to believe. So you only believe in things you don't know. And you can have very strong faith in your beliefs, but it's not going to alleviate that that emptiness inside you because belief in the false, the belief in the objectified projection of an image of a God is not going to fulfill it. And of course it temporarily does when you've given your life to the new savior and you've now found a new religion or found a new path and you found a new breathing technique or whatever it is. And for a while, it's just amazing because there's a suspension of the thinking pursuing mind and the, the joyous nature of self comes to the surface but unless you know what that self is and you recognize that self as the self, which is the son of God, the dogma returns and the emptiness returns. And what happens? We become more aggressive and then we start imposing. And because we don't know it, we then project it externally. We say someone's going to fight us for our God. So for our sovereignty, they're going to invade. So let's invade them first. And that's the essence of the crusades. You're going to go and convert and destroy why? Because back then, people didn't have an intimate relationship with God. You may believe that you judge your brothers by the messages they give you, but you have judged them by the messages you give them and then interpret the messages you're getting back from them, reflected back at you as if it's happening to you and you're a victim or they want to turn you into a victim and then you get all defensive and then you attack. Do not attribute your denial of joy to them or to anyone, or you cannot see the spark in them that would bring the joy to you. Why? Why would it bring the joy to you? Because it's a mirror. It's a reflection of the joy you are. It is the denial of the spark that brings depression. The, the spark, the essence, the self, the son of God's self. For whenever you see a brother without it, you are denying God in yourself, in them, as the only true reality. Allegiance to the denial of God is the ego's religion. The God of sickness obviously demands the denial of health because health is in direct opposition to its own survival, which is quite a strange thing. How can health be in direct opposition to the ego survival? Because the ego will continue even though if it kills you, why? Because it'll live through the grief of others that then are sad for your death. And that's why do not be sad when others die, especially with their fr friends and families. Why? Because then you're denying the understanding that they are pure extensions of you, the dreamer. Celebrate that they are temporarily free from this density of ego and body mind projection. Because when you know what life is, you can't be sad for the illusionary dying of that which can never die. But consider what this means to you. Unless you are sick, you cannot keep the gods you made. For only in sickness could you possibly want them because then it gives you a reason to believe that God is punishing you or you've done something wrong. Or then to replay out your guilt and hopefully get to that place where you say, there has to be another way. Blasphemy then is self-destructive, not God-destructive. You can't destroy God regardless of what people believe. It means that you are willing not to know yourself. And what's the instruction? Be thyself knowingly in order to be sick. So sickness means you've forgotten what you are. This is the offering your God demands, your God's demand, your fallen asleep idol's demand, ego in other words. Having made him out of your insanity, he is an insane idea. And you know how the Bible says, oh, the, the devil can take on any form. The devil has many forms. The devil, the ego. These false gods, the ego, has many forms. 
For although he may seem to be many different things, he is but one idea, the denial of God, and therefore the denial of the Son of God as you. So it means you've given the sovereignty of your mind to the wrong mind, to the ego mind, to the, the God of, of darkness, and then it denies it in you. And yet you may still believe in an objectified God in you, but because you believe the world is real, you're actually struggling with idolatry. But this too can change. Just be willing to let, let it be shown. Sickness and death seem to enter the mind of God's son against his will. The attack on God is made his son think he was fatherless because he couldn't remember God. So he created an idea, an image of him and hoped that it was right. And out of his depression, he made the God a depression. This was his alternative to joy because he would not accept the fact that although he was a creator and is a creator with God, he had been created. So he has the reason for the fall. This was his alternative to joy because he would not accept the fact that although we are created, we have been created. Yet the son is helpless without the father, can't exist, who alone is his help. We cannot do anything by ourselves. Why? Because the very essence of what we are is the extension of God. We're not separate from it. So the Christ is now saying to us, I said before that of yourself you can do nothing, but you are not of yourself. If you were, what you have made would be true. And, and you could never escape. That's why God has no idea of our activities of the universe in our dream mind. Because if he did, it would make this universe of material time space real. And we would be stuck in it. And that's why the Advita students, if you're listening, that's why this isn't an activity. The universe is not an activity of God's dreaming mind. Because if it was, what would call him to return? If he falls asleep, the whole of him is asleep. This is the activity of God's son, an extension of God. The sonship, one, fell asleep and dreamt this universe. And it's God calling us back without any awareness of the illusion we're dreaming of. It is because you did not make yourself. So you, this is not God dreaming. This is you dreaming. And that which made you is God. So it's because you did not make yourself that you need be troubled over nothing. Your gods are nothing in your dream because your father did not create them. You cannot make creators who are unlike your creator any more than he could have created a son who is unlike him. So father and son are one and, and the same in essence and in character and in trait and in energy and in everything. If creation is sharing, which it is, it cannot create what is unlike itself because it's only extending itself. It can only share what it is. Depression is isolation. So you cannot heal by isolating yourself. You cannot remember God by isolating yourself. Look how long religion has done this. People that go into secular religions and they hide from the world and they become alone and, and, and reclusive. It's all you love your creations and pour yourself lovingly into it. And how will you know what you are unless you have mirrors around? If you've never seen your body, how would you know what you look like and how to brush your teeth and do your hair? You need mirrors, your brothers, because they show you salvation is in you when you see it in them. But you have to be willing to see it in them. Depression is isolation. And so it could not have been created. And therefore, it's not meant to be. Don't isolate yourself. Don't run away from this world. You cannot remember what you are on your own. Yes, there'll be times of aloneness and times of quiet solitude and prayer and devotion. But quiet time is meant to be God time, not escape time. Son of God, you have not sinned, but you have been much mistaken. Yet this can be corrected and God will help you, knowing that you could not sin against him. Sin is not real. No punishment. You denied him because you loved him. You denied God because you loved him, knowing that if you recognized your love for him, you could not deny him, and therefore you would have to deny your dream. Your denial of God, therefore, means 
that you love him and that you, that you know he loves you. So why would you deny it if you love, if he knows you love you, you and you love, you know he loves you and you love him. Okay. Why? Remember that what you deny, you must have once known. And so you've forgotten. You can't remember. You feel guilty. So to compensate for your guilt, you deny God. And then you make another one, a vengeful God, a God of the Old Testament or whatever religion you have. And you give him commandments and then you fear him. Why do you fear him? Because you don't know him. When you know God, you no longer fear God. Why? Because you know that God is love and love is not to be feared. And if you accept denial, you can accept it's undoing. So realize you've denied him and now asked to be shown another way to see this, which means undo this. So another way to see it, shed light on the darkness and the world and universe of shadows. And when the light comes, the shadows dissolve and the light remains and you know yourself and you know the light is the extension of God. You know yourself, you know your father, you are one. Your father has not denied you. This is what the ego makes you want to believe. He does not retaliate, only ego retaliates, but he does call to you to return. When you think he has not answered your call, you have not answered his. What is God calling you to do? Pour yourself lovingly into the world. Serve your creations by showing them the light of the world, not seeing them as wrong, ill, sick, diseased, in trouble, and now you're going to go and save them. What you see, recognition of yourself. You go and pour yourself lovingly, supportively, compassionately. God calls you from every part of the sonship. It's either a cry for love or an act of love that you see because he's of his love for his son, you, his son. If you hear his message, he has answered you. Be yourself lovingly. This reading is his answer. This is God talking directly to you brought through the Christ mind, represented as, as Jesus in the mind of Helen Schuchman, shared with us lovingly. And you will learn of him if you hear all right. The love of God is in everything he created. For his son is everywhere. His son, the universe, is everywhere. Look with peace upon your brothers, non-judgment. You cannot judge and be at peace. And God will come rushing into your heart in awareness and gratitude for your gift to him. How can it be a gift to God? Because your gift to your sons, the son of God in your dream, the fractured cells is a, is a gift to God's son. And a gift to God's son is a gift to God because the father and son are one. Do not look on the God of sickness for healing, but only to the God of love. For healing is the acknowledgement of God. When you accept him, you will know that he has never ceased to acknowledge you, you as the son, as the dreamer. And therefore, as the fractures too, but not as the fractured body mind, but the essence of each fracture, which is the son. And that in his acknowledgement of you lies your being, the shared being. You are not sick and you cannot die, but you can confuse yourself with things that do. You are not the body that dies. You are the essence, which has manifested the body in projection, returns temporarily to the dream world. And over periods of reincarnation, you eventually awaken yourself. The dream world disappears in your mind. You return to the Christ mind where you are the self, the son of God, and you knowingly remember yourself, knowingly remember God. Remember though, that to do this, okay, to, to deny yourself and confuse yourself with the things of this world, is blasphemy, for it means that you are looking without love on God and his creations from which he cannot be separated. And therefore, everything you see is the essence of you. And since the essence is God, of God is the essence of God, everything you look upon is an echo for the voice of God. Everything you look upon is a misperceived, projected essence, which is God. Okay. And God cannot be separated. Although it is in your dream, your dream is in your mind, your mind is in God. Only the eternal can be loved, for love does not die. What is of God is his forever, and you are of God. Would he allow himself to suffer? 
How can he allow himself to suffer? If a part of him suffers, he suffers. And so suffering isn't real. And would he offer his son anything that is not acceptable to him? If you will accept yourself as God created you, perfect, you will be incapable of suffering. Why? Because you're perfect and what perfect cannot suffer. Yet to do this, you must acknowledge him as your creator. This is not because you will be punished otherwise. It is merely because your acknowledgement of your father is the acknowledgement of yourself as you are. Your father created you holy without sin, holy without pain, and holy without suffering of any kind. If you deny him, you bring sin, pain, and suffering into your own mind because of the power God gave to you and therefore gave to your mind. So in other words, he gave you the power to believe and make believe, and whatever you make believe then becomes true for you, even though it's not true in God's true reality. Your mind is capable of creating worlds, but it can also deny what it creates because it is free. And what we're doing is we're denying ourselves in our brothers, but Christ and all. You do not realize how much you have denied yourself and how much God in his love would not have it so. Yet he would not interfere with you because you would not know his son if he were not free. To interfere with you would be to attack himself, and God is not insane. And how could God interfere with you and attack himself? Because you are an extension of God, and if he, if he attacked the extension, he'd be attacking himself. When you deny him, you are insane. Would you have him share your insanity? God will never cease to love his son, and his son will never cease to love him. That was the condition of his son's creation, fixed forever in the unchanging eternal, omnipresent, omniscient mind of God. To know that it, that is sanity, to deny it is insanity. God gave himself to you in your creation, and his gifts are eternal. Would you deny yourself to him? Love your creations. Out of your gifts to him, the kingdom will be restored to his son. The kingdom is you the essence of you, so be restored in your awareness. His son removed himself from his gift by refusing to accept what had, what had been created for him and what he had created in the name of his father. Heaven waits on his return, the prodigal son, for it was created as the dwelling place of God's son. You are not at home anywhere else or in any other condition, conditions of denial and unawareness. Do not deny yourself the joy that was created for you, for the misery you have made for yourself. So rather choose the joy. God has given you the means for undoing what you've made. Listen, be still and know, and you will learn how to remember what you are. To listen, you have to be quiet. Still your mind in order to hear the voice of God. If God knows his children as holy, sinless, it is blasphemous to perceive them as guilty. It's only a dream. No matter what they do, it's not real. If God knows his children is holy without pain, it is blasphemous to perceive suffering anywhere. So you can see it and be compassionate, but don't acknowledge it as true. If God knows his, his children to be holy joyous, it is blasphemous to feel depressed. All of these illusions and many other forms that blasphemy may take or refusals to accept creation as it is. Creation meaning the pure extension of the love you are. Okay, What we see instead is a misprojected hallucination of what we're not. If God created his son perfect, and that is how you must learn to see him, to learn of his reality. And as a part of the sonship, that is how you must see yourself to learn yours. Do not perceive anything God did not create or you are denying it. Perceiving? Body, space, time, illusion. His is the only fatherhood and it is yours because he has given it to you. Your gifts to yourself are meaningless. People, places, things, and events. But your gifts to your creation, loving them unconditionally, showing up and being supportive in your love, joy, and peace without judgment, are like his because they are given in his name. 
That is why your creations are as real as his. What are your creations? The extension of love. That's the only creation you really do. But because you misperceive it, you see it as people, places, bodies, things, and events. Yet the essence in all of them is what you are actually extending and therefore actually creating. You're extending love. You're extending the self everywhere. If the real fatherhood must be acknowledged, if the real son is to be known, you must acknowledge your father as the essence of you. And, the, and if you want to know yourself, you believe that sick things you have made are, are your real creations because you believe that sick images, so that the sick images you perceive are the sons of God. No, they're not. Okay. So what you see as bodies in the world are not the sons of God. It's your creation. You are the Holy Son of God. You, the dreamer. You, the observer. Only if you accept the fatherhood of God will you have anything. Because his fatherhood gave you everything. That is why to deny God is to deny yourself. Arrogance is the denial of love because love shares and arrogance withholds. As long as both appear to you, arrogance and love, sorry, as both appear to you to be desirable, the concept of choice, which is not of God, will remain with you. So the only real choice you have, choose right mindedness. See everything as love from a place of love. While this is not true in eternity, it is true in time. In other words, in the illusion, in the dream. So that while time lasts in your mind, there will be choices or the appearance of choices. Time itself is your choice in which choices appear. If you would remember eternity and eternity is therefore God, you must look only on the eternal. Devotion to silence, devotion to God. If you allow yourself to become preoccupied with the temporal, the things in the world, no matter how beautiful they should be, no matter how destructive the world's being, if you pay attention there, preoccupied there, you fall into the trap of the space-time illusion. You are living in time. As always, your choice is determined by what you value, space-time or eternal reality. Time and eternity cannot both be real because they contradict each other. If you will accept only what is timeless as real, so if you'll accept only what is timeless as real, you will begin to understand eternity and make it yours. Why? Because eternity is yours. You are eternity itself. I hope this has brought some clarity and a deeper understanding to the, the contents of the Course in Miracles. I hope that this sheds light on your essential nature, the essence of you, which you say, share, which is the extension of the essence of God, and is therefore the same essential nature as the essential nature of God, which is, in our understanding, unconditional love, agape, which is the acceptance of and the, and the giving of the free will to all that you are, extended as your creation. And unfortunately, as we fell asleep, then looked upon our creations for the misperceived understanding and therefore projected it as our misper misperceived projections, the world of space-time bodies and illusions. Be blessed in Christ. Have a great um, week ahead. I'll see you all on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we will continue. Um, we, we've now done chapter. So we're going to go to chapter 11. And so it's a little long chapter. And so this coming Wednesday, Text chapter 11, God or the ego, which is really about choosing the right mind. Um, we'll try and I'll try and cover at least the first three if I can, maybe all the way up until four. Thank you for joining me and never forget that you are that which you seek, Holy Son of God. <laughs>